Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing today? We got another muggy day here. I think we actually have some rain coming today. But you can hear the birds. It's very, very, the air is really heavy out here. All right. Let's get to it. We're going to do Psalm 144, and I got our Simplicity of Salvation verse. And um, you guys can see, I was listening to the radio this morning, and they were talking about how all the numbers, just in Bear County here where San Antonio is, um, all the numbers of COVID have doubled um, every few days. Uh, well, this isn't isolated. This is happening everywhere. The news isn't telling you about it. <clears throat> People being hospitalized, people on ventilators. It's getting really bad. It's a second wave. You know, they, they shut parts of China down again because of it. A um, lot of stuff is going on. But people aren't catching it. They're not paying attention. They're not looking at what's going on, um, especially in their local area. They just, it seems like most people are reactionary. And it's, it's not good. What do we do in a situation like this? Well, Jesus told us not to to be troubled. He told us not to worry because he's got this taken care of. He's he's watching over us. He's going to deliver his people. And if we see these things, we shouldn't be fearful because we know what this ultimately will lead to. The ones that need to be fearful are the ones that aren't saved. And this is what our commission is. If we're called to a ministry of some kind, it, it, the, the bulk of the content, the main goal of that ministry is to get people saved. We need to focus on getting them to Christ for salvation so they don't have to endure these things. Or that if they do, they have a hope waiting after that. That when they step out of this body, they will step right into the presence of the Lord. So that's what we do. And... The title of Psalm 144, a song to the Lord who preserves and prospers his people. It's now more important than ever that people get the truth. Not just it's grace through faith, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, but that have you seen what was going on in the world today? Let me show you in the Bible where it talks about these things. Now that you understand, because you know, especially that now the unbeliever sees it too. Now that you understand that this is all supposed to happen, you can see that the tribulation is very close. Now, more than ever, you need salvation so that you don't have to go through these things. So that you're not going to get caught up in these things. So that you won't be destroyed. And people aren't doing that. Um, it's hard for to do it with a lot of people. The Lord will bring people to you that are ready. But that's got to be the focus. Hey, do you see what's happening? There's a reason why that's happening. And anybody that I can talk to, anybody that I can get a conversation open with, that's, that's how I open. Because it always goes back to that. And I tell them, I said, the Bible talks about this. When they start bringing up COVID or anything, I tell them, the Bible talks about all this. What? Really? Yep. You study scripture? I study prophecy too. What do you think's going on? It's, we're about to step into the tribulation. What? It's like, yep. It's about to happen. Like, no joke. Every prophecy in the Bible that involves the end times is active right now. And they're just, they look shocked because nobody's told them that. I told him, I said, if you're not saved, now's the time to get it done because uh, you may not have a chance tomorrow. And, you know, people, are, they're shocked. They're taken aback. But it gets them thinking and it plants seeds. So that's got to be our focus. All this infighting going on, this is all because of Satan. He doesn't want us leading people to salvation. He wants us focused on all this fighting. Well, it's funny because all this fighting that's going on, I pulled myself out of this. I'm answering people's questions and emails and comments, um, talking to some new believers that have been floating into the channel, telling them where to start in the Bible, you know, uh, answering different questions, pointing things out. And they're all fighting, and that's what their focus is. I'm focused on trying to help people understand more. Um, and there's a few others that are doing the same thing. This fight, you got to leave this fight alone and let them fight it. And come out and focus on people who need help. This has got to be the focus. We've got to be there to, to benefit people, to help people. That's why we do morning and evening prayer. Edify, lift up the brethren. Strengthen them. Because what's coming is going to be bad. And we have to be honest. We can't sugarcoat it. What's coming is going to be bad.
Let's get into some prayer. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to bless you, to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you. In all four of those things I just said, those things are for your, they apply to your works that you do in the world, in the body, in the lives of man, that you do in all of your creation, the, the, the protection you give, the changes that you make, the divine appointments you create, the works that you develop and put in our paths, all the things, all the little things we don't catch, we don't see that are you. And it's, it's everything. That it's all you. All good things come from you. And it's so easy in this life to, to get caught up in the world's daily details and miss those things. But we change our focus and focus on you instead. We see those things. Thank you, Father, for our eyes to see. Thank you for our spiritual eyes to see spiritually. Thank you for our ears and spiritual ears. Thank you for our mind and our heart that we may know and understand these things thank you for giving us insights into the world into what's happening into what we see going on with people thank you for warning us to stay away from certain things that we know we shouldn't be a part of and thank you for mercy and grace and salvation without that without you we have nothing all the stuff that's going on on YouTube, Father, I know you see it. I know you're watching it. There is much more important things to do than to be involved in that. And I'm trying desperately to pull as far away from that stuff as I can. Because people still need salvation. People still have questions that need to be answered. People still need help. And that's what we're called to do. Father, help us to stay focused on the real issues, what's what you want us to do and focus on, what your will is for us. Help us to stay focused on the truth, your truth, focused on our Lord, focused on what's right, and then to do what's right. We love you, Father, and we glorify you because you are God. You are the one true living God. There is no other God before you and there will be no God after you. Help us to show that we love you. Help us to show that we care. Help us to show that we believe by the very things you put in your word. This morning I'd like to pray Psalm 144, a song to the Lord who preserves and prospers his people. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like the passing shadows. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words, and whose hand, right hand is the right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God, on the harp of ten strings. I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the land, sorry, from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters be as pillars, sculptured in palace style, <clears throat> that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. That our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out. That there be no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. <clears throat> and you are our God. You are our Lord. 
embodied in our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I listened to somebody last night, Father, that they, they talked about, you know, all these people wanting to hear God, just like I talked about yesterday, wanting to hear you. And I got a word from the Lord. I'm hearing him audibly. Uh, you're not saved if you're not hearing him. All this nonsense people come up with. And this person said, I realized every time I read the Bible, I'm hearing the voice of God. And that was the same realization I came to. Every time I read the Bible, I'm hearing your voice. Every time I listen to creation, the birds right now singing, I'm hearing you. Your voice is everywhere. That means you are everywhere. And this should be so sobering for us because if we know you're everywhere, that means we know you see everything. You hear everything. Everything we say. You see everything we do. That should give all of us pause to stop and think about the things we do and the things we say. In the darkest private places, you know. Father, bring us to a place of thanksgiving for your grace and mercy. Bring us to a place of understanding of your power and omnipotence and bring us to a place of knowing that you are God, you are watching, and you are taking care of those who are yours, those who truly love you and truly want to be in your presence, those who truly walk in truth and have a desire to do so. John 3.36 says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Father, there's so much contained within that one verse. Uh, I mean, I can scarcely cover it in just this morning prayer. But Father, you showed me something in here. Just like you showed me so many other little nuances in your word that tell us so much. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Salvation. Simple. So simple. But then the very next part of the sentence, whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. We read that wrong because that little punctuation there after life means the thought has changed. The way we normally read it, Father, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. We, how we should be reading is whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Everybody that believes has life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. Of all these people that have eternal life, if you don't obey, you have a problem. But the wrath of God remains on him. I really hope that the people that are hearing this prayer, Father, will take the time to meditate on this and what this really means. Go read it in context. Look deeper into the scriptures. Because by doing so, they find you. They find your true understanding. And it blesses them and helps them walk closer to you, which is what we're called to do. Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your patience in giving us more time to figure these things out and to come to a better place, to be prepared for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be ready when he comes, to be worthy, to be counted worthy, to escape all these things. You didn't put that in there by accident. That was on purpose. Father, help us to be worthy to go. We want to be worthy. Help us to do your will in our lives. Help us to learn more. Help us to bless more. And help us to lead more people to salvation if, if it's possible at this late hour. Again, Father, thank you for your mercy and thank you for your patience that you gave us more time to figure this out, to come to a better place, a closer walk. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray.
the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Father, it, it is all according to your will. But if you, you feel inclined to give that command, we're ready. But I know why you haven't. Because more people are coming around. And that's a good thing. And we need to give thanks to you for every day that we have on this earth is another day to learn. It's another day to come out of sin. It's another day to change and to draw closer to you. It's another day to lead others the same direction. Again, Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. If you have time, go look at John 3.36 in context. Five above, five below. Ponder what this says. Because this applies to so many other scriptures. And then go to the Father in prayer. Go to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him, and He'll tell you. That's what I've done, and He's shown me. You'll be amazed at what you learn about yourself and about the people around you. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.